Que pasa, amigos? Me amo, Scott. De fly rides. Por que estoy hablando en español? Because we are talking about Orbea. Orbea is the manufacturer of some of the best electric mountain bikes in the world right now, and they are coming at you from Spain. Orbea likes to stress kinematics, rider experience through customization, and they also developed what is probably the best lightweight EMTB in the world right now. I am talking, of course, about the Orbea Rise series. What makes these super light electric mountain bikes so different from the other lightweight electric mountain bikes on the market today is that they offer almost as much power as a full powered EMTB. Today, we're going to be talking about the Orbea Rise M20 to find out if EMTBs can still be amazing when someone went all honey, I shrunk the kids on your motor's torque. Let's check it out. Primer, vamos a hablar de specs, baby. Let's talk about specs, baby. First of all, before we dig into exactly what the specs are going to be, I did mention this up top, but one of the great things about these bikes is again, say it with me, that customization, you guys. It's not available on every bike, but the Orbea Rise M20 happens to be one of the bikes that you can customize to your liking. Now I will say, if you're planning on taking advantage of this feature and planning on customizing your bike, it is really best to talk with an electric bike expert so that they can tell you how this might delay or change your bike. Of course, if they're customizing a bike especially for you, it's going to take a little bit longer. So head on over to flyridesusa.com to check out wait times and also talk with an electric bike expert. But let's dig into those specs. Starting off, you have got the Shimano EP8 RS motor. That RS is going to stand for Rider Synergy, and it essentially means that this motor is going to feel more natural. The EP8 RS is essentially a nerfed version of the Shimano EP8 developed by Orbea and Shimano specifically for Orbea bikes. It's going to offer 60 newton meters of torque and 250 watts, and it's one of the main reasons that people are crazy about these Orbea Rise bikes, because again, that is a lot of power for a lightweight bike. That's going to pair nicely with a 360 watt hour battery. Now I know what you might be saying, that doesn't seem very big, but Orbea does state that you can actually expect one and a half times the range of a typical EMTB because of the weight savings on this bike and the less powerful motor. If you're not convinced by me saying this, they do offer a 252 watt hour battery pack that you can extend your range with. The Shimano EP8 RS motor is going to partner with the Shimano SLX drivetrains, 12 speeds on there and a 10 to 51 tooth cassette. You definitely want to see a wide gear ratio on a bike with a less powerful motor, and you do have a wide gear ratio on this bike. And then your group set is going to be rounded out with Shimano hydraulic disc brakes as well. They're going to be the M6100s on 180 millimeter rotors, front and rear. But you can upgrade that front rotor to a 203 millimeter rotor if you so please. Speaking of upgradable components, let's talk a little bit about the suspension. So this is going to be a 140 millimeter bike the way it comes standard. So it is a really excellent cross country setup. And on a bike of this weight, you could definitely get away with all mountain usage as well. Up front, it's the Fox 34 float performance, but you can upgrade that to the Fox factory fork if you would like. And then in the back, it is a Fox float DPS performance shock, which you can upgrade to a Fox float X factory. You've got an entire arsenal of Maxxis tires to choose from. If you purchase this bike standard, you're going to get Maxxis dissector tires that are going to be 2.4 inches wide on 29er wheels. To me, this is a pretty perfect setup on this style of bike, but if you want to change that out, you can upgrade to 2.6 inch wide tires on Maxxis Minions. Your geometry continues to ride that beautiful line between cross country and all mountain. It's a 76.5 degree seat tube angle and a 65.5 degree head tube angle. So I really have no complaints or notes on the specs on the Orbea Rise M20, but of course, you gotta see how these bikes ride. So we are going to take this bike out for a spin. The things I'll be most focused on on this bike is how that Shimano EP8 RS motor functions and also whether or not I am able to get as much range as Orbea claims. Let's check it out. All right, dropping in on the M20. See how this thing does.
all right, I'm gonna stop here, take a look. Cardiac Hill. If you've ever wanted to test how an e-bike climbs out here in Penasquitos Canyon, it is Cardiac Hill. Um, again, I'm used to a full powered EP8 and I always ride on boost. We're gonna see how we do on the climb. So I have ridden this once before on the H30 from Orbea. And what I notice is the climbings aren't so much harder, they're just a little slower. Um, first thing notice right away, because of the weight difference, you do feel it pull up a little bit. Um, so you gotta just get that balance down. I'm six foot two. I ride a large in almost everything I ride. So obviously if I was on an XL right now, potentially would not be, you know, having that lift up feeling. Um, but for the nimberness on the trail, I almost always like to be on a large. And by the way, I've been out here all day. You know, we've been out here for a couple hours. We've been stopping to do some shoots, but I still have the green light for my battery indicator. It hasn't flinched. And again, I've been able to ride in trail. This is my first real turbo experience. And I mean, it's nice. It brings you right up. Will, what'd you think? Loved it. Yeah. No problem. No problem at all. Yeah. It's wild. All right, guys, dropping in the tunnels. Whew. The hardest part about this trail is keeping away from the low hanging branches. Even with these stock tires, I mean, it does fine. It's a little loose, but it's no real complaints. The maneuverability is just incredible. You know, in the Fox on this, like I said, a lot of people say, oh, I'm gonna upgrade, you know, to a 38. I mean, it handles, I mean, I'm not doing enduro, but I'd say if this is what you're doing, stock components oops, stock, are gonna be just fine. Woo, duck. Square. Oh, yeah. Feels good, it's so light. You know, things like that, I'd usually hesitate to really try and pull, but because of the lightness, I feel like if I get a little off balance in the air, very easy to handle. You know, my first ride, you know, I was on a real downhill, long, steep descent, and I was like, oh, it's slower. But on trails like this, I mean, the same speed as I would have on anything, because it's so windy, so much movement, the weight, that you know you thought was helping with your speed is really you know on this the lightness is helping you maneuver a lot better than you would anyway so potentially speed is there just because that's what you're doing anyway a little creek crossing coming up i'm not worried about the motors i never do that's why you buy from a dealer because say you do have an issue Bring it right to them. All right, I'm gonna throw it in the turbo. Quick little steep climb. I can feel that pull again. So you do have to really lean down. Make sure you're doing it the correct way. Little bits. Woo. Ah. And that guys is an awesome loop. Worst part about this loop doing cardiac hill again, but that's why we have e-bikes, right? So I gotta tell you, these bikes are extremely fun. Now, I have always been a fan of the super light EMTBs. When I saw motors like the Fazua coming out and also bikes like the Turbo Levo SL, I was so excited to see where the industry would take super light bikes. And the Orbea Rise has improved upon it to an insane degree. 60 newton meters of torque is nothing to stick your nose up to. I mean, until a couple of years ago, that was only slightly below what a lot of the motors were putting out, like the Gen 2 Bosch Performance Speed Motor, which I rode without issue for years. I never felt like I didn't have enough power on that motor. Similarly, on the Orbea Rise M20, I never felt like I didn't have enough power either, and we were doing some pretty steep climbs. These super light bikes like the Orbea Rise do improve on a lot of areas of owning an EMTB that you don't even really think about until you use a super light bike. For instance, getting the bike off your rack on your car, allowing for an easier transition in terms of riding style from an acoustic bike to an EMTB, and as Orbea claims, just keeping you in the feeling that you're having a more natural experience out on the trails that isn't over-influenced by a motor. 
But the reason the Rise really excels is because it does really close that gap between full powered, heavier EMTBs and lightweight EMTBs. With the weight difference on this lightweight bike, I really felt like the 60 newton meters of torque didn't make a difference at all between my full powered EMTB and the Orbea Rise. Basically, it just felt like being on an EMTB. One thing I did want to mention is that smaller battery size, that 360 watt hour battery, while I didn't have any issues on our approximately 15, 20 mile ride with range, I still had plenty of battery left when we got back. I did want to note if you have concerns about not having enough battery, you might want to look at the Hydro series from Rise, as they are going to have bigger battery packs, you get a 550 watt hour battery, so if you do have concerns about that battery, know that there is a Rise option for you, you can upgrade to that Hydro series in terms of your battery capacity. I would say the M20 is definitely for people who are looking for a more high performance experience and aren't needing as much power as much of the time because there's no doubt there's a big difference between a 360 watt hour battery and a 540 watt hour battery, no matter how light the bike is. But again, for our 20 mile ride, I never had any concerns that I was gonna run out of battery. To me, the main selling point of these Orbea Rise bikes is that there really is just no comparable bike on the market. Full powered EMTBs are generally going to be a lot heavier, whereas other super light bikes from other companies just aren't going to offer the same amount of power and range as the Orbea Rise series. I think the EP8 RS motor is brilliantly designed. I really don't know how they did it. They were able to keep things extremely lightweight while still offering a ton of power. In terms of the M20 within the lineup, that is essentially going to be the entry level of the M bikes, which means it's going to be at a reasonable price point, especially with the type of components that you're getting on this bike. I think it's really high quality stuff that fit the type of riding that you would like to do on this bike. And honestly, it's hard for me to imagine liking a bike in this series better. But we'll have to find that out as I continue to work my way through the Orbea Rise series. Which you can watch us do by subscribing to the Fly Rides electric bike channel and making sure to hit that bell so you don't miss when videos come out. If you're looking for more reviews on Orbea bikes or the Shimano EP8 RS motor, make sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'll be sticking up a couple of videos for you. Who knows, they might be popping up right now. I guess they are. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like it so that other people know to give it a watch. And until next time, enjoy the ride.